All right, good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, thank you all for joining today's talk, um, especially after the fire alarm. So today I'm gonna talk about um, Dacry's vision for enabling AR everywhere and how Dacry is building a product ecosystem to make that vision possible. Um, and before we get started, um, my name is Cassie Lee and I am the product manager for Dacry Devices. So for those of you who don't know, Dacry is an AR technology company. We are headquartered in LA, sorry. <laughs> we are headquartered in LA and um, we have offices around the world in four countries. Um, we bring together seven years of experience in computer vision, um, wearables, and holographic technology. And I think we've been at AWE every year. So um, I want to talk about Dacry's vision, which is bringing AR everywhere. And um, just to help you paint this picture, uh, you can imagine a factory worker um, wearing an AR helmet. And he's doing his work with augmented instructions, doing maintenance, service. And then once he's done with his work shift, he takes off his AR helmet and he puts on his AR glasses. And the glasses allow him to see arrows fixed to the ground, and he walks, follows them to his, where his car is parked. Um, and then once he gets to his car, he is able to have his AR experience seamlessly transition from glasses to the car's heads-up display. So now he sees the arrows not on the ground, but fixed to the road. Um, from there, he drives home, and he gets to his house. He takes his AR glasses inside, and he's able to have his AR experience seamlessly transition from his glasses to another form factor, maybe in the house, like an AR projector. So you can kind of see in this example that AR is not specifically tied to one device, but instead it is available everywhere, it follows you wherever you go, and it seamlessly transitions from one device to another. So how do we actually make that vision happen? Um, I'm gonna talk about what Dacry is building out in their product ecosystem and um, walk you through how we make that vision possible. So at the foundation, we have excellent hardware with sensors and optics that are optimized for AR. We have the Dacry Smart Helmet shipping today, the Dacry Smart Glasses that is shipping soon, and the Dacry Smart HUD that is in cars today. So driving all of this above the hardware, we have a powerful operating system. And this is optimized for our hardware as well as um, has computer vision built in so you have AR ready to go. We call this the Dockery Visual Operating System, VOS. On top of that, we have APIs that give developers access to all of these powerful capabilities in VOS. Um, this API is common and consistent so that you can basically do the seamless transition that I just talked about in the experience prior. So on top of that, you have applications and services. Um, every one of our devices ships with a core set of apps such as camera, remote expert, web browser, and this allows developers to get started right away and take advantage of the functionality we offer. But of course, there are more applications that you can build. And many of our customers have already been doing this. So they are able to use our developer tools, which includes wrapping the public API in a C++ SDK. Um, we also have our API wrapped into a Unity extension. And this essentially wraps um, all the hard parts and handles them for you. So it does calibration, uh, stereoscopy, and the interaction of the UI. And so all you need to do is build for you your use case on top of that. And um, if you're more interested in this, uh, there's a talk coming up on Friday about more details on this. So um, now you have devices and applications and services, but um, if you want to deploy at scale, what you need is a mobile device management system. So we built our own for customers, and it helps you to provision, deploy, monitor, and deliver OTA updates so that you can deliver to all these products at scale. So you can see Dacry is focused not just on one product or service, but we're building an entire ecosystem that spans excellent hardware, a common AR-optimized operating system, developer tools that are very easy to use, and a device management tool. 
So we think that this is really how you bring AR everywhere and make it possible at scale. So this is just a glance of our hardware products. We have from left to right the smart helmet, the smart glasses, and the smart HUD. So first and foremost, the Dockery smart helmet is made to be a hard hat and is made to be eye safe. So we have a very impressive array of sensors, including an Intel RealSense for depth mapping and a long wave IR thermal camera for heat mapping. We also have an impressive 44 degree field of view. Um, it's powered by a sixth generation Intel Core M7 processor. Um, and this is comparable to what you would have in a modern day laptop. So um, what this allows you to do is you have seamless rendering of a lot of large content. Um, we have had customers put in large undecimated CAD models and they're able to render pretty effortlessly. Um, and at the core, everything is built for AR. So you have um, the AR capabilities that I talked about before. So computer vision is embedded into the operating system and um, we have a dedicated tracking camera as well as a uh, six degrees of freedom positional tracker. And all of this combined together allows you to place content fixed in the world with very little latency. So our other form factor is the Dockery Smart Glasses, which we announced this year. Um, so this is designed for a different set of customers because they have a different set of needs. Um, it also has a 44 degree field of view and the sensors are all accessible through the Dacry APIs. Um, the same set of I APIs that I, d I ex explained earlier that is available for all form factors. Um, we made it easy to use by adding a fingerprint sensor. Um, this makes it possible for you to simply and securely log in rather than inputting text entry. Um, we made the design modular and very lightweight. So everything on your head is, it's mainly displays and sensors and we've offloaded the processor and the battery into a separate computer that you wear on your hip, which you see on the right there. Um, and the cool thing about this is you have a standard USB-C cable as the interface between the two. And because it's standardized, you can actually unplug this cable into another computer that has an existing USB-C port as long as it supports our VOS SDK. So, um, you know, you're able to, for certain use cases where you need to be able to render large complex content, you can actually get more graphics processing power. So we actually partnered with Dell and we are showcasing already the Dockery Smart Glasses plugged into a Dell laptop as well as a Dell tablet working and um, we can actually, if you come to visit our booth, you can come out, come check it out. You can also see the Dockery Compute Pack. So you can see both configurations side by side. So um, I talked a bit about wearables, but I'm gonna switch over to talking about a new type of interaction method. Um, so we at Dockery have been thinking about input and navigation for quite some time now, and it's a big issue in AR. So um, you, know, you guys know that there's a ton of other input mechanisms out there. Um, there's gesture, voice, one directional controllers, but um, we still felt like there was a lot missing in the ecosystem. So we are announcing Omni today, and it's the first input device of its kind that is designed specifically for AR. So you hold Omni in the palm of your hand, and um, it has a full surface trackpad. It has, um, uh, you can do finger-based micro gestures on it, and it has a physical um, feedback response from haptic feedback. Um, and with Omni, you can essentially turn virtual interactions into real-world interactions. So uh, it has a six degrees of freedom tracking integrated into it. So um, you can basically have an accurate and precise way to fix content into the world. Um, and just to help you guys imagine this a little better, uh, you can have Omni, you can imagine holding Omni and the blue origami bird that you see there just kind of flies in and perches on the Omni. Um, you can imagine using Omni as a measuring tape at a construction site. So you see augmented walls, you see augmented doors and windows, and you use Omni to measure between a window. Um, you can imagine using Omni as a scalpel at a surgical training procedure, and um, you can use Omni to basically 
make an incision, and then it can give you augmented feedback on whether it was the right cut length, whether it was the right position. Um, it can even use a haptic feedback response to give you a physical reaction. So you can kind of imagine how Omni can help to bridge the virtual with the physical world, which is something you're already used to. Um, and then, of course, Omni is available through Daiquiri APIs, and um, you'll be able to customize it to do whatever you need it to do. Okay, so I've talked a lot about hardware. Um, now I want to focus on powerful, hard, or powerful services and software that run on top, because of course, without that, you won't be able to do much. Um, and rather than talk about this, I'm going to show you some videos. So 3D environment mapping is a service that creates a virtual 3D map of your environment in real time. So a helmet, or a user wears a helmet and walks around and it either actively or passively gathers data. And um, you can of course supplement with more users so you can get better granular data and you can keep it updated over time. Um, you can zoom in and out like you see here and it tracks the depth map over a time series so you can actually go forward and back to any point in time where the depth map is gathered and um, it can allow you to basically manipulate whatever data point you're looking for. Um, you can also toggle different overlays on, on the 3D environment map. So there's thermal just now and then RGB. Um, and with the RGB map, you can do the same thing. You can manipulate forward, backward. You can zoom in and out to whatever viewpoint you need to look at. Um, and we also have a way to toggle on photorealistic models. So here the texture turns on and off, and it goes between standard resolution and much higher resolution. So you can optionally add more processing. Um, in the helmet specifically, we have a thermal sensor. And so this is able to gather heat map information over time. And this is overlaid on top of the 3D model that you create. Um, with this, you're able to, again, move around. But um, in this view, you can see the very hot spots in the lights. And you can imagine using this for um, issue detections, knowing exactly the time and the place where something gets hot and potentially could create an issue. Um, so all in all, you can see the 3D environment mapping service has um, very up-to-date, high-quality, photorealistic, and thermal maps that it creates. And it can help you do change detection over time. OK, so I went through a lot of the powerful capabilities of our hardware and our services. Um, I'm going to talk about the availability of each device. So the Smart Helmet is available now, shipping now. If you guys are interested, talk to one of our sales guys. Um, we have the PPE version that is a hard hat and eye safe coming out in early Q4 of this year. Um, the smart glasses are in kind of a select early access program right now. So um, we're working with a few people, but if you're interested, come talk to us. It might work out. Um, we do have the version available for anyone to buy on our website already, and that will be shipping in Q3 of this year. Um, the next generation version of the glasses is going to be um, released in 2018. And then um, the Omni AR controller that I talked about today is going to be available in Q4. So I'm going to close out with just a couple highlights of um, successful customer deployments of Daiquiri devices. So Siemens made a application that helps you to maintain, service, um, do training. And they did this on wind turbines and gas turbines. Mortensen built an application that brings in a full-scale BIM model of a hospital, and the construction workers can actually visualize and walk through that model before the hospital is even built. Um, touch surgery is creating um, simulations of surgical procedures in AR, and it's helping surgeons in training learn how to do their procedures. And of course, we have many, many more examples. So we are currently working with over 150 companies, and this number is growing every day. So thank you guys for listening. I know that was a lot of stuff in a very short amount of time. Um, just again, a shout out for if anyone's interested in pre-ordering the glasses, it's available at shop.dacry.com. Um, you can just put 10% down up front, and it'll be available when it ships in Q3. 
um, make sure you come visit our booth. We have all the demos that I talked about, everything here you can try on for yourself. You can see how it actually works. Um, and then we have two speakers coming up. So I kind of did a shout out earlier, but we have developing on Dockery devices on Friday. I think it's 9 a.m. And then we have um, Chris Baker talking about successful customer deployments. And he actually goes through and has measured benefits for each of the case studies. Um, and then, yeah, questions. Great. So I gave up my good mic to Cassie. So thank you. Thank you, Cassie. Um, let's see if uh, there are questions on Slido. Has to switch. All right, let's take one live. Okay, what is the price of the helmet? It is fifteen thousand dollars. Another one. Just pick one from the. Um, well, I definitely cannot answer how many helmets Daiquiri has shipped because that is um, information we're not giving out. But as you guys have heard, we're working with over 150 customers. Um, and construction industry, yeah, definitely. So that was kind of the BIM example. We're actually doing quite a bit of work. Um, so if you look up Autodesk and um, Mortensen, we actually have a video on um, our website talking about how we did this kind of creation of, we imported their BIM model. It was undecimated. And um, we had it placed in the real world where they were actually building this hospital. And so the construction workers could walk through and visualize it as they were walking around. And I mean, it really helps them to understand what they're trying to build. All right. Thanks again, Cassie. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks so much.